Europe's first ever Jupiter mission is officially underway. The European Space Agency's JUICE spacecraft launched atop an Ariane 5 rocket from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. The liftoff kicked off an ambitious mission to study Jupiter and three of its biggest, most intriguing moons. They're called Ganymede, Callisto and Europa, all of which are thought to harbor big liquid water oceans beneath their icy shells. Let's talk about these ambitious projects popping up and the whole idea of space exploration. Dr. Amitabh Guhosh is a space scientist at NASA. He's joining us from Washington, D.C. Doctor, good to see you and welcome to We On World Is One. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I will ask with a very simple question, or I will start with a very simple question. Do you believe there is life beyond the planets? Yes, I do believe there is life beyond the planets. We have uh, one followed by 24 zeros suns in the universe. So to have life only in our sun and in only our planet would be near, a near miracle. So I, I think there is life in, in the universe. Doctor, what's this extraterrestrial phenomenon all about? Many say only Americans believe in it and are the only ones who have seen strange objects flying over the skies, but not in any other continent or country. What do you say? Well, I think UFOs means unidentified um, objects, right? Unidentified flying objects. So the thing is, the Q is unidentified. So to naturally assume that unidentified means extraterrestrial is um, is a big leap of faith. So um, if I uh, was to be convinced as a scientist, um, as Carl Sagan said, you need to have extraordinary evidence to follow this extraordinary hypothesis that somehow these UFOs are extraterrestrial objects. What more do we know about the JUICE spacecraft? What is, going to exp what, what is it going to explore? Can you tell us about the fascination around Jupiter? Yes. So this is very exciting, something we do not really encounter um, in, in the news day to day. So let me give you an exam example. So Mars and Earth and anything beyond between Mars and the Sun are called rocky planets, which means you have a core, then a mantle and a crust. Here, um, there are some satellites of Saturn and Jupiter, which under the crust, maybe 15 miles below uh, the crust, there is a 40 to 100 mile liquid ocean, which is incredible. You know, so all these three satellites, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa that JUICE is going to vis visit during its mission, all have oceans beneath. And how much water are we talking about? What is the depth of the Pacific Ocean at its highest? Maybe eight to nine miles. Do you think here it is 40 to 100 miles? But of course, there, it's a smaller diameter satellite compared to Earth. But we are talking of water more than... Uh, found in all oceans of the Earth combined. Why is it interesting? If you look at the Earth's oceans, there is a thing called the aphotic zone, which means there's no light below. Right. So maybe a kilometer or a mile below, the ocean on Earth is completely dark. So here you have a dark ocean 10 miles, 15 miles below the ground. Right. Will life be there? So that is the exciting question. On Earth, life originated in the oceans. So these oceans have been around as long as Earth has been around. So is there life in there? So it's a fascinating question. It is, it is highly, I wouldn't say highly, but it is possible that life could be there in these oceans. What does the, the European Space Agency, you know, hope to achieve with this mission? See, they have a very uh, um, varied list of instruments, mm -hmm. spectrometers, magnetometers, radar sounders, um, uh, optical cameras, they want to study the the plume which is coming out. So so I mentioned that there's an underground ocean. So for um, uh, one of the uh, planets, one of the uh, moons, we have found uh, there is a, a jet, water jet coming out. So can you measure the composition, the density of that jet to get an idea of what may be inside the ocean? So this is a part of a long um, 
list of co missions which will come. So there is another uh, Europa Clipper mission which will launch next year, but um, um, arrive a year earlier. And then ultimately the goal would be, could you send a underground submarine 15 miles below the ice to look for life? So, so there are already, you know, trials in Antarctica going on with such a submarine. So it's a very long, long drawn process of exploration, but it's a very interesting question. Unlike Mars, here you have an ocean, a huge ocean, bigger than any ocean on Earth. Quite intriguing, Doctor. Let's talk about missions now. Argo Space Corporation, yeah. a startup founded by three former SpaceX employees, are eyeing to build a transportation network in space with the help of reusable spacecraft, which would be propelled by water. What do you make of this mission? Is it feasible? So, um, can you tell me water where? Is it going to be a mission on one of these outer planets? Yes. Or where? Well, okay, so I don't know about about this effort, but the water has to be accessed below the surface, as I said, 10 to 15 miles. So if they have a way of going below the surface somehow, so, so that is the current challenge. You know, how do you drill so deep? Mm -hmm. so, so I'm not really uh, aware of their plans, but if they have a solid plan of how they would access the ocean, then it would be, that, then it would be a good mm, effort. Doctor, talking about water, researchers have made a discovery that makes lunar living an increasing possibility. The moon's right. surface is littered with tiny glass beads containing water, which could be extracted right. and used by visiting mm -hmm. astronauts. Doctor, as a right. researcher, where do these beads come from and what do they mean for future moon missions? So the beads come from... Um, uh, meteorites so we are continuously uh, uh, bombarded by meteorites the moon on all the planets and earth the meteorites burn up because of the atmosphere <clears throat> and um, will it be possible for future explorers to extract it i i think absolutely so it looks like a the moon looks like a very inhospitable place so if you go back a hundred years people used to think the um, poles are a, a very inhospitable place but today in the south pole you have um, continuous human presence um, 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 to do experiments at the McMurdo base. So what you need is a habitation module. Um, so we can argue that you, are, you and I are sitting in a habitation module with a roof on top of our head with air conditioning. So here in, in addition, you need oxygen and then you're good to go. And then the water part, um, the southern pole of the moon has um, is always in shadow and so there are ice deposits there and so presumably those deposits can be melted to provide water for human use all right finally we are now living in the advent of artificial intelligence or ai i have to mention that nasa and the european space agency have been using ai technology to chart galaxies and even stars and send robots to other planets but how ideal is AI or artificial intelligence in space exploration? It's hugely important, particularly when there are no humans to make decisions. So, for example, in the rover missions, um, because of, you know, there is a difference between the Martian day and the Earth day of 37 minutes. So this creates difficulty for Earth-based controllers to control the... Um, spacecrafts on on Mars. So, so there, I wouldn't say artificial intelligence, but some form of artificial intelligence has been used to target rocks, to image rocks, to make decisions. So, this will become increasingly widespread. Um, to just just because you have this mission going there, you don't want it to be idle. So, best to have artificial intelligence to pick targets, to make decisions. Uh, but I'm, I think humans will still be in the loop. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not that the AI will completely take over control. Okay, I, I know I said finally, but uh, as a research a scientist, I want to know from you, what advice do you give uh, countries that are, you know, in line with space exploration, like India? What advice would you give the governments 
uh, <laughs> when they take forward this exploration uh, and they want to like be the trendsetters in the future? Well, India has a very strong program. So, you know, India has a, ha, had a Mars mission, had multiple missions to the moon. Um, they have this gravity wave um, observatory. So I wouldn't say India is, India is already there in the, in the game. Um, but there are, as the cost of space exploration drops, there will be many more countries which will join this new frontier. And imagine if there was any commercial benefit that came out of this frontier, mm -hmm. then there will be even companies, private companies, uh, in addition to countries that will join this race. Space scientist Amitab Ghosh, thank you very much for all your insights on We On World Is One today. Thank you. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.